Howdy doodly, happy Tuesday. My name is Philip Popsicle, and scientific studies have proven that the average person only hears about 33% of everything that you say. So, in order for them to really hear you, you have to say things three times. Scientific studies have shown that uh, only about one third of everything you say is actually heard by the person listening. So you have to say things three times in order for people to hear you. And did you know that scientific studies have shown that people only hear about one third of everything you say? So you have to say things three times for people to hear you. I'm just kidding. But uh, anywho, I am wearing my spaceship Earth goggles right now as we are speeding through the universe and as Nassim Haramein shows our our galaxy is not just a a stagnant rotation around the Sun as we are kind of taught growing up but instead we are this vortex of spinning planets that are all following behind the Sun and we're speeding through the universe and so every single day we're literally waking up in a new XYZ coordinate of the universe and we are literally living on spaceship Earth. The equator is moving at 2,000 miles an hour, so you gotta have your goggles on in order to stay, stay in line. And these are also from Burning Man, and I am getting really excited about Burning Man 2012. It is my highest dream to inspire and invite as many people as possible to Burning Man 2012. If, if you're saving up money for any vacation, I highly recommend thinking about putting that towards Burning Man instead. It's, it's in 2012 from about August to the end of August to the first week of September. And by now, if you haven't watched a lot of my other videos, you probably think I'm crazy or I'm on some kind of crazy drugs, which I'm not, except it depends on what you classify as drugs because there's such things as endogenous drugs which are chemicals released by your own brain and I do a lot of yoga and meditation and they allow me to get into all sorts of non-ordinary states of consciousness and a lot of people think that's crazy or weird but it's really something worth looking into so I am just flowing and mojoing right now, um, chilling in Happy Valley, Pennsylvania. It's a marvelous day. I just went for a jog in the rain. And this is the first time that I've ever worn a scarf in a video, I think. Um, <clears throat> this was gifted to me by my good friend Moss, or Macaroon, as I like to call her. And, um, I just wearing a scarf I would previously in my earlier years probably think that was gay or girly and uh, I think it's important that we well I'll quote some flowetry from the album paradigm shifting flowetry TV tells you ugly duckling but you're a gorgeous goose TV tries to sell you something but never tells the truth. I say less TV, more lessons from Dr. Seuss, because the ones who matter don't mind, or the ones who mind don't matter, and the ones who matter don't mind. So basically what I'm saying is wear whatever the heck you want because we shouldn't spend all our time worrying about what other people think because the people that you actually want to be friends with don't care if you wear a scarf. They're not going to call you gay. They're not going to call you girly. And uh, I, for so much of my high school years, I was so concerned always wearing certain clothes that I wouldn't get made fun of. You know, I, ha I was literally self-conscious if I was wearing socks that were a little bit above my shoe. I would be like so nervous that people were gonna make fun of me because I had these high socks on instead of these low cut socks. And it's just insane, it's ridiculous. It's crazy that we waste mental energy on these things. And um, I know I'm just being silly and crazy in this video. I think silliness and craziness 
is a very important part of life, but it also fits into this holistic view of the world where we take into account all the, the insane situations going on. And um, that's, that's one point I want to make. Maybe I should make it three, three times so that everyone hears it. Because scientific studies show that you have to say things three times for people to actually hear it. Uh, especially if you say it in three different ways. Um, but anyways, the point is, all of the videos that I make and things that I say, it, they could be pigeonholed in a certain situation, but I feel that they fit into this holistic view and these new stories of the world that we're coming to understand the ones that Charles Eisenstein is speaking about, the ones that Bruce Lipton and Spontaneous Evolution are speaking about. And these are the, the views that see humanity as finishing this age of separation, which is coming to an end, the age of control, the age of the ascent of humanity where we're going to conquer the universe. And these stories are, are so built into our civilization that it's hard to, hard to see them because they, they are the perceptual spectacles that we've been born with. We've been born with these big goggles strapped over our eyes. Well, we're not born with them, but as we grow up, we get these goggle straps tighter and tighter. And then by about fifth grade, we don't even realize that we have the goggles on anymore. Um, and they're just strapped on and when I read all these books it was like they were slowly like taking off the goggles and I was like whoa holy cannoli there's a lot going on here and uh, I mean I have a lot of videos about speaking about these issues speaking about these new stories and new paradigms um, but I think it's important to constantly have that, that frame of reference so that we, we understand how our own actions fit into this larger story. And for me personally, I sometimes get caught up in uh, one specific way of being and I can become to get really serious in that like, okay, I need to do this and accomplish this and I need to email this person, I need to do this person. And I forget to have fun, and I forget to play, and I forget to celebrate, and I forget to be silly, and I forget to wear scarves because I'm too busy being one certain way. And um, the Hopi native people from uh, the Midwest say that we are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the ones. And we must do everything in a sacred manner, in a celebratory manner. And uh, I think that we can do these important forms of activism and changing the world. We can do it in a fun way. And the real truth is that fun is, is like the missing ingredient that's going to catapult us into this new era. And for example, if you have a garden party or something, if everyone's having a good time singing songs, I guarantee you'll get 10 times more work done than if you had like this specific regiment like, okay, Charlie's going to plant the tomatoes, Ananda's going to rake the leaves while she's doing this, and we're going to finish at 5 o'clock, then we're going to do a summary, then we're going to do this. It's like this, this age of separation, this age of control is, is crumbling. We're seeing how it's not, it's not fulfilling, it's not working. And the new era that's starting and already beginning is the age of, of interconnectedness, interbeingness, increased creativity. And speaking of that in another sense, it, uh, it ties in with the left and right brain. You could say that the age of separation, we were super left-brained and logical and analytical and linear. And now we're integrating the right brain hemisphere, which is more creative, more focused on the present moment, the now, in between the ni hao and the chow is now, the ineffable Tao, that kind of thing. <laughs> and, um, and so we're moving into this new way of being that's creative, it's fun, it's silly, 
you get to say things three times so people actually hear them or maybe in the new paradigm they hear you on the first time because they're actually listening because they are present in the present moment because they've been cultivating mindfulness and uh, and just doing that thing um, so while I am flowing and mojo in here I just want to recommend a few wonderful things that are super easy to do to just make the world a more beautiful place I love giving people free CDs of of interesting music I've recently been burning the paradigm shifting flow tree album which I would love to share with you I will post the link to it I could mail you a copy if you want if you want to make a contribution you can hit me up on PayPal that's one thing but also just burning CDs of like mixing your favorite music and just giving them to people because sharing music and sharing gifts is such a wonderful thing and um, and just I've had I had this re burst of realization during the bike trip a while back where it was like someone the first time I met them they just gave me a gift it was like within five minutes they gave me a gift this one girl before she even told me her name she's like do you want an apple and I was like, wow, that is such a cool thing to just offer someone a gift right off the bat. And it ties in with the golden rule. It's like, treat others how you want to be treated and realize that it feels awesome to just receive a gift, but it also feels awesome to give a gift. And when you spread good karma, it comes back like a boomerang. And when you give and receive, you swing like a orangutan. <laughs> So that's one cool thing that's super easy to do, super cheap, super revolutionary, super amazing. Um, another thing is just having, having um, this is a sense of uh, empowering your environment, having positive reinforcing smells in your environment. So one way of that is incense, I mean, it's really incredible to me how burning an incense can just trigger all these memories. Sense of smell is really tied in with memory. Um, and also it's pretty cool, like the smoke just kind of fills the space and it allows you to get more of a sense of, of the dimension of space. That's a very fascinating thing for me is how if we, if we didn't have any space, then everything would just be filled together there would be no it would just be all one chunk um, it's just an interesting concept to entertain um, and I know I'm bouncing all over the place but I love bouncing all over the place because life is a big bouncy play ball <laughs> or what are those things called um, you know I like discovery zone a ball pit yes ball pits are awesome if you go to Burning Man, there's probably going to be a ball pit there, so I'll, I'll meet you at the ball pit. <laughs> um, another wonderful thing, which I'm going to post, the main link is this really incredible video, which I highly recommend. It's all about how the ideas that we have personally, or the, the skills and gifts that we have personally, it's hard for us to recognize their power f from ourselves. but other people can appreciate it and benefit from it and so it's important that we give our gifts how are you going to assist the shift how are you going to dish out your gift that is the question and the video talks about how every idea is important to share and I think it's really important to have a notebook pretty much by your side all the time to write down these ideas because I'll post another link to this TED talk that talks about how these ideas are not ours and it's only in this as I mentioned before the old paradigm of separation where we have this separate self that ties in with the ego and all these other things where we not only we either want to claim that the idea is only ours and that nobody else can have it or we um, are scared to share that idea. But the, I feel that more closer to the truth is that these ideas are kind of flowing through the universe. And the Greeks used to say they come from the muse. 
and then they turn into a musician, somebody who listens to the muse, kind of bottles that up or writes it down and then shares it with everyone else. Um, so we're kind of like channeling these ideas as hollow bamboo. So I think it's important that we write down the ideas that come to us and then share them with other people. And even if just one person benefits from it, then you did your job, job well done, you know? So CDs, incense, notebook, I recommend zillions of things. Going to Burning Man is going to be so exciting. Holy cannoli. Um, but please share any questions, comments, video responses. I really would love to see more people getting on YouTube and just sharing. It took me a while to get the confidence to do it, but once you start doing it, it's so easy. And it's as the idea video shows, it's like you may not think you have anything beneficial to say, but firstly, you do. Secondly, there are lots of people who really want to share, make their voice heard, but they are not in a situation where they can do it. So I feel it's our responsibility to speak for them, to give voice to the voiceless, and to give visibility to the invisible. Even if you just get on YouTube and talk about new, positive news stories that most people aren't hearing about, or even if you don't want to make videos, you could just share these videos or share other in interesting videos, share them on Facebook, post them on other websites. There's so much inspiring things out there. I just would love for them to spread more because a lot of people need to be inspired. I see grumpy people all around all the time and I feel if they just had some inspiration, activation, imagination, activation, then they would be a lot happier. So, scooby-doo, check out the links. Have a beautiful Tuesday. <laughs>